Okay, welcome back for this session on hardware masking. We have three talks in this session, and they all three have hardware masking in their titles, so I guess it was very easy to put them in the right session. So first one is Hannes Gross from Graz. So he will speak about generic low latency masking in hardware. It says different there in the yeah, book. Um, <laughs> sounds right. And it's a collaboration with uh, his colleagues from Graz, Rinat Yusupov and Roderick Bloom. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so my talk is on uh, generic low latency masking in hardware. And uh, with this work, we tried to give answers to two very intriguing masking questions. So the first one is, is it possible to secure, securely evaluate a really complex mass function in a single clock cycle? And um, yes, we achieved this. And the second question is, does higher order masking require any online randomness? And quite surprisingly, the answer to this is no. Uh, but as always, when things sound just too good to be true, there's a huge but trailing our answers, but we'll come to that uh, afterwards. So let's start from the beginning. Since I'm the first guy in this, uh, in this session, I thought I'd give you some brief introduction to masking. So what we're trying to uh, achieve or what we're doing is we're splitting up secret information into a couple of uh, fresh random shares. Well, we denote random shares by capital letters, starting from A, uh, then B, C, and so on, till we reach our uh, security parameter D. And uh, at all time, we ensure that only by bringing all the shares together, we can reveal the secret information. And this is what we try to compute on. And the goal of a masking scheme is now to give simple rules to keep the separation of the shares throughout the entire circuit. And uh, since we built upon the findings of DOM, I just give you a short introduction uh, what we, how we, um, how we transform an unprotected circuit to a DOM protected circuit. So this is uh, quite easy. So we have here an example circuit consisting of some inputs and outputs, and some linear gates and a nonlinear gate. And the first thing we do um, is we're just copying the original circuit two times, so we're targeting first order protection. And these copies now become our domains. So the first domain uh, we will from now on denote A, the second B. And um, we also will identify the, the wires in domain A by a prefix with the domain letter and for domain B uh, accordingly. Uh, so up to this point, uh, everything was uh, really simple, and you can obviously see that this uh, achieves, uh, achieves the goal that we set, so we want to have a separation of all the A shares and all the B shares. The only problem with this circuit uh, is now that it's not already correct. So it's secure, but not correct. So uh, we need to change this. In order to change this for linear operations, this is actually quite simple. The only thing we have to do is to throw out the inverters from our uh, second domain here. Um, then we are actually fine, so all the other uh, stuff change, uh, stays completely unchanged. Uh, things get a bit more complicated once we change to nonlinear operations like the end gate here. Because this means that our domains need to communicate with each other over a protected channel, and this usually involves some fresh randomness. But we go into details uh, on this later on. Just a brief uh, summary about domain-oriented masking. So it's a circuit-centered uh, scheme with circuit-centered rules. Uh, so this makes it really convenient for hardware designers. It uses D plus one shares, which, which is the minimum amount of shares to achieve leaf order security. So this leads to quite efficient um, masking designs. It is also completely generic, which means that we can easily synthesize our circuits for any protection order that we target. And also compared to other generic masking schemes, uh, it is uh, uh, low randomness. So, um, what is it that we actually try uh, to achieve here? What is the issue with uh, latency and where does it come from? In order to see what, uh, where, we, um, where we spend our cycles on, let's have a closer look at the uh, 
uh, at the two-bit uh, end gate, uh, a non-protected two-bit end gate. So this is like um, a multiplication of two, of two elements over GF2. And uh, once we put it in this shared form here and try to, uh, to manage the multiplication terms in such a way that we put everything into the according domain, we immediately see that uh, we will always end up with two shares per domain that uh, don't belong into this domain here. And so for this reason, we constructed this DOM end gate here. And what we do here is uh, for, for this critical across the main terms, we add some fresh randomness and then also put everything into a register to make sure that the glitches don't propagate. And then finally, we compress everything together. And so from this, you immediately see where the latency obviously comes from. So uh, we have this register stage here. And in order to, um, to evaluate this end kit, we need to spend two cycles on it. However, there's uh, another issue, which comes from the inputs. Um, so in order uh, that this multiplier is secure, we need to ensure that the inputs are independently shared. Um, and if this is not the case, usually it is enough to place a register before, before the um, uh, multipliers here. And this would cost us an additional, uh, uh, additional register stage. So in order to get rid of the first issue, this is actually kind of easy. We can just completely uh, skip the compression here. We don't need to, um, to throw in randomness and uh, have registers. This is a bit surprising at first, but actually when we look at the multiplication terms themselves, they're all secure. So as long as we don't add them together, this is totally fine. So the first thing we introduced uh, new in this paper is that we extended DOM by allowing for uh, multidimensional domains. So with this, we already saved this register stage here. Um, the only problem is um, the more multiplications we do um, in the sequence, the more shares we get, the more domains we create. And at some point, this becomes unbearable. And so we can't do this forever but at least to bring the latency down for, to some extent, um, we can do this. The other issue is if we have related inputs um, because of glitches, um, then it could happen that in a short moment in time, what we're actually calculating is, for example, uh, we are doing the multiplication of the same element with which, um, yeah, of the same element, and therefore bringing together the shares of this variable uh, in a straightforward way. And in order to circumvent this in a circuit where we don't prevent glitches by registers, uh, we just copy the or add an additional sharing for the same variable, and now uh, the equation becomes fine. So we use fresh randomness for the sharing of this x prime here that is independent of the sharing of x. As a first simple example, let's have a look at the ASCON S box. Um, and already here on the unprotected circuit, we see that there will be some uh, colliding inputs once we reach this um, multiplier stage here. So uh, what we would do in DOM now is we would just place after the, after the XOR gates, after the fin lane, uh, layer, we would place some registers to get rid of the glitches and make the shares independent. Uh, and here we try to avoid this by coping some of the of the inputs of this, um, of this ASCON S box. And then we would just use the multiplication gadgets as from before, that, um, the Lola uh, DOM gadget uh, for, the, for the multipliers here. Um, so uh, some intermediate results. So as you can see here, for, for the full implementation of ASCON, we successfully managed to bring down the cycles from three to seven, depending on the protection order, to only one cycle. Um, and also in terms of actual latency in nanoseconds, uh, we achieved the reduction. However, when we look at the first order numbers, for example, we see that we needed to invest more than 10 kilogates in order to achieve this. And also, we, we use more than six times the randomness. So it costs something, but uh, it works. However, uh, it, um, 
the Ascon S-Box was actually designed to be very easy to be protected against side channel analysis. So we also picked a much more difficult example for this, which is the AES S-Box. And the first thing we needed to decide on was which actual S-Box design we are targeting. So there are a couple of uh, designs in the literature, and the first um, um, presumably a suitable choice would be the Boya Peralta S-Box, because it was especially designed to have uh, low circuit depth and low complexity. Uh, however, uh, we built a tool that uh, helps us to trace all the signals through the entire circuit and will tell us where we would get a collision. And as it turned out, actually this isn't so optimal for, for our scenario, because we get a lot of uh, gate collisions and input collisions for that. Um, another um, S-Box instruction that is quite frequently, uh, frequently used is the Kenwright S-Box. However, this also turned out to be not suitable, and so we finally decided on using the actual most simple S-Box design we found, which is this MUI S-Box. Um, however, when we trace, uh, trace the input signals here through the, uh, through the circuit, then we would still detect that we have it all all of these points here, uh, collisions uh, of the inputs. And so what we did is we, uh, in order to avoid these collisions, we again copied the, the input. And for some things, we also needed to copy um, the fan-in circuit of the, of the inputs. For example, here for this uh, GF16 multiplier, we needed not only to copy the, the input X prime here, but also needed to copy the input transformation that comes with it. Um, and for an inverter, we had to copy the, this whole uh, area before um, that feeds into the inverter and so on. Since uh, with each multiplication stage, we increase the number of shares, uh, we thought uh, that we also tried to, um, to, um, to uh, find suitable spots where we do an intermediate compression to bring down the number of shares. So we, uh, we also have some uh, two additional uh, variants of this S-Box. So the first one uses, uh, uses a compression at the output of the AES S-Box, and the second one uses additionally a compression in between. So from the results of the AES S-Box, we again see that uh, we su succeeded in bringing down the cycles that we spend on the S-Box from three uh, to eight cycles uh, to only uh, um, to below three. Um, however, again, we see that uh, depending on which actual uh, design we use, um, we have quite some overhead in, in terms of chip area and randomness. So this zero latency variant here was only to show that in general it's possible to create hardware designs, uh, even that are generically masked, higher order designs that don't require any online randomness. Because we could continue with this approach uh, as for the S-Box for the rest of the circuit, but uh, as you see, we will end up with uh, quite some chip area here. So it's more a theoretic result. Uh, finally, we also did a formal verification of our designs, so therefore we used our tool that we presented uh, to Eurocrypt uh, this year. And this works by doing an approximation of the Fourier spectrum of the circuit for all possible signal timings. However, for larger circuits, this can take quite some time, so we also gave it some thoughts on about how we can uh, increase the verification speed, especially for this uh, Lola designs that we created, and we came up with this idea. Uh, so since what we are actually trying to do is we are trying to avoid collisions of all of the shares, so uh, what we can do now is we just split up the whole circuit into the domains we use, and uh, simply by ensuring that there is no connection between uh, either of these domains, we, we uh, can give the security guarantee that this is actually uh, thief order secure. And this turned out to be quite faster, so we verified the zero latency uh, AES S-Box design in only 11 minutes, and also verified uh, the ASCON S-Box up to order three 
um, with, both, uh, with both approaches. So this brings me to the conclusions. So what we demonstrated is this, that masking does not, always, does not necessarily require any registers or online randomness. However, um, we see our contribution really as to give the designers of protected circuits uh, a new design choice for trading area and randomness against latency. And also, this is only our first uh, approach uh, into bringing this low latency to generic designs. Uh, and so there are quite some open questions. And it, um, if you're interested in low latency masking, then I suggest you have a look at the paper, because there we give a list on, uh, on some open research questions that we think will be interesting in the future. Thank you. Questions? Comments? More throwing the cubes. Okay, then I have to. <laughs> um, have you considered my randomness recycling to cut the randomness down a bit? Uh, no, not really. So it, this would be one of the open research questions, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Uh, also, we tried a quite straightforward uh, approach for this compression, where we didn't use domain-oriented masking for that, because this would, again, cost us two cycles, so we used CMS for that. But I'm pretty sure that this is not the optimal choice, so I think we can bring down the randomness as well. And also, for the AES S-Box design, for example, uh, the, the numbers seem really impressive in terms of area and, and randomness. But uh, so it's important to see that we really try to go to an extreme and just demonstrate that the scheme itself is working and that, uh, um, that the theory is sound. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that you will find uh, or can, with, a, with much more effort, create a more um, suitable low latency design based on this. So for example, uh, you can um, cut off the linear layer on, on before of the, of the AES S box. So if you avoid glitches here, for example, then a lot of your, of, uh, of your variable collisions will immediately vanish. So we didn't consider this in the first place, but this would be just one of the things you could try, for example. Okay, let's thank the speaker.